Special guest joining us right now, R. Shri Shankar, Head of Institutional Equities at Prabhudas Leeladhar uh, uh, joins us. Shri, thank you so much for taking our time and I know it's hectic earnings season so really appreciate you taking out uh, time for us and telling us uh, what looks, what's really how the market is really treating uh, shareholders right now. I, I want to start off with earnings season and we're anticipating Maruti in a bit, Shri. Uh, are the earnings uh, expectations low enough for this season that uh, disappointments are going to be far and few because we're already at rock bottom expectations? I guess so. And in fact, um, uh, in our own estimates, when we looked at the earnings round, and uh, it was supposed to uh, be on a quarter on quarter, it was supposed to be down a, per a percent, closer to a percent. So, which means that uh, expectations were uh, um, fairly muted. Um, so, um, I don't think that uh, there is going to be a huge disappointment. Uh, um, uh, probably possible because the expectations itself was muted. That's number one. Number two, uh, if you look at the earnings which has come in already, it is more or less in line with expectations. IT, uh, where uh, uh, two results I, I specifically point out, a couple of results out here. L look at uh, what HCL Tech did. They gave a, a guidance on revenue, uh, the first instance, and uh, but the results what they gave was much beyond analyst expectations. So, despite that guidance, you know things were looking much better out there. Infosys gave a super performance, but again was cautious in their future outlook. So uh, here you have a set of results which has been extremely good um, uh, on the IT pack. So that's taken care. Now look at banks. HDFC Bank has come out with a superb results. So so is the case with uh, Indescent Bank. Now we need to act, eagerly wait for what Axis today. Then uh, the biggies, you know, ICICI Bank and SBI. Uh, leave uh, uh, the the PSU uh, the uh, other PSU banks aside. So you have a result so far from uh, at least the biggies. It has been good. Then even on the FMCG side, I don't think it has been disappointing. But uh, people were budgeting in for a lower growth in terms of volume uh, because uh, rural has been slowing down. So when you look into it, I think results have been quite reasonable. Shri, you mentioned about the financials and, and um, you know what I'm hearing from a lot of the conversation is also what is uh, good right now is also very expensive in the market and it's commanding that premium right now because if you're, if you're a safe investment you have to pay the multiple for it. HDFC from last evening's numbers that you saw, the market's giving it a big thumbs down. There is a big slowdown coming in um, in the fee income. There is a slowdown coming in the corporate loan segment as well. Is there a hint of worry even in the safest bets now? Um, I would rather look at it in a different manner okay. uh, because uh, the HDFC is in the uh, uh, home loan portfolio and, and, and uh, if you look at the home loan portfolio, whether it is LIC Housing Finance, HDFC, etc., has been uh, um, uh, pointing towards a lower growth numbers. In fact, and that's reflective of the real estate uh, scenario as well. So it, it, it's altogether a combination of all these factors. So um, our own estimates for HDFC, a target price is only 4% upside from yesterday's closing. So we, it's not a part of our topic, it's a part of our accumulate rating that we have uh, in, for the, uh, for the uh, entire universe. So I think it's a, a mixture. I think uh, if you look at financials, HDFC is purely ho housing loans and corporate loans on that side. But whereas in the financial services, when we speak about uh, HDFC bank, there is corporate, there is retail. Within retail, the product segment, be it personal, be it credit card, be it uh, car loans, and be it various other things, plus MSME and everything else. So it is a, it's a, a, a function of larger number of offerings that you have. Whereas in the other side, in HDFC or LIC, everything finance, it's a single product segment. Okay. Um, Shri, what's the house call um, or, or your personal thoughts on the Indigo IPO, the QIB portion at least oversubscribed in the first hour itself. Some would argue, uh, some would argue that it was an extremely expensive looking IPO at 765 on the upper band where the anchor investment has come in. Um, would you suggest going into the IPO for retail investors or, hope, or, or wait it out for the secondary listing and, and then decide? Uh, first of all, we don't have an active coverage on Indigo IPO. But okay. having said that, uh, uh, we probably look into the airline industry. We having looked into the airline industry. Our thoughts, and uh, it's purely an individual thought, right at this moment, um, on a couple of factors. Now, look at it. Uh, year on year, you actually have 
the biggest raw material of yours, the crude oil, down closer to 50 percent. Number one. Number two, at the same time, you don't have your FS down 50 percent. FS, there is no more deep discounting. Things have been extremely positive. So from that point of view, you actually have a contribution coming at the EBITDA level, a bigger contribution coming at uh, the margin level. That's number one. Number two, three years back, this country had 300 aircrafts. Today, you have got, I think the number is 260 or what. In three years, the, the demand has continuously grown. And obviously, that has resulted in your uh, load factors in the aircrafts going up quite considerably. Number three, with a higher load factor, lower crude prices, all the, all, all the airlines at this stage should be doing uh, good contribution. EBITDA break-even must be at much lower levels. I think there are a lot of positives happening for that industry. And uh, Indigo is probably coming at the right time at the right place. Oh, all right. Um, uh, she to take away from the immediate uh, stocks and uh, sectors for a minute, I want to understand what your take on over leverage is at this point. Coming into F515, everybody said the biggest problem is going to be the NPA numbers for PSU banks uh, and the over leverage that corporate India currently face. Some of the groups are sitting on huge amount of debt and very low interest coverage. Uh, do you think that is going to be a burden on to some of these companies that will not be able to ride out uh, the recovery as it happens in the next year? Yeah, I, I, th I think so because you know if you, there are some groups, there are some industries which are over leveraged mm. and especially if these groups are into commodities and if you till the time you see the commodity cycle recover itself and start growing at a faster pace, probably uh, uh, these companies may not be able to service uh, uh, much of their debt. So that's, uh, that's a worrisome factor and um, uh, I think uh, uh, quite a good number of groups are there in that category. It's definitely a worrisome factor. So Sri, before I let you go, what's your real call on the market? Will we end it out uh, pretty much flat from here? Is there going to be a potential upside after Diwali? Is it going to be a happy Diwali uh, in terms of uh, investments? And if you have a windfall gain of some sort at this point, uh, is it a good entry level for the markets? See, I do believe that uh, the market's looking, um, from the domestic point of view, it's looking, it's definitely look, uh, looking interesting at this stage. One, what are the key for the domestic <coughs> domestic triggers? Number one, it's going to be the um, corporate India thought process and the guidance that you're giving or the confidence level of the corporates that's coming out post the uh, quarterly results. Number two, elections uh, um, outcome in Bihar. So whether we will continue to see that uh, uh, the, the yeah, easiness at which the government has been growing. Third, what happens to the global economy? And the global economy is still huffing and puffing and it's you've got uh, issues coming up uh, in emerging markets, especially the commodity, uh, strong uh, con countries which are strong in commodity um, uh, exports. So there is a lot of headwind. There is actually deflation, more than deflation, I should say that there is a recession in these countries. So there are headwinds in the global side. So how does as a, India as a country is going, to, uh, uh, is going to face the challenges of a global problem and uh, grow? And my uh, thought process alone is, yes, we are relatively better, so we will do relatively well. This is where I end up. So the call on the market is, you, we will be relatively better off than a lot of these countries. The low crude prices adds up to my current account. Uh, um, uh, lower current account deficit and also it uh, gives me le lesser pressure on my currency. All right, Shri, thank you so much for that. Candid insight coming Pleasure. in from Prabhudas Leela Dharar. Shri Shankar talking to us about the markets and earnings and where we're really headed.